Hi guys, I'm Olivia and this is Live News Workshops. It's going to be a basic 101 guide for how to shoot with your phone. This course is recommended for iPhone users, so please know that before going forward. And again, thanks for watching and thanks for taking the chance to really invest in yourself. This is going to be a great guide for how to take photos and how to take videos using your iPhone. But first, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a journalist. I've been a journalist for more than half of my life, so I know storytelling. And I also know technology. It's because I shoot, edit, and write all of my own material, and I have been doing that for a really long time. So I understand cameras, and I understand the iPhone's camera. Trust me when I say that, because I don't only use it every day of my life for fun. I use it for my job all the time. So this is why this course is perfect. It's a real basic guide for anyone who doesn't really know how to use their phone to the maximum potential. So that's what I'm going to teach you. Part one, settings. It's really vital to understand your phone's settings. So you go into settings and then scroll down to camera. Second, check out record video. Make sure your settings are set to 1080p HD at 60 FPS. This is a great way to record video to put it into Premiere to edit it after. Yes, it's not as high quality as 4K, but it's going to take up less space on your phone, it's going to look high quality, and it's going to transfer to your computer with more ease. Next, record stereo sound. This option is really good to select if you want to record stereo sound from all sides of the camera. You want to turn off stereo sound to record mono if you are going to be using a microphone phone. Otherwise, keep stereo sound on. So keep stereo sound on if you're not using a microphone, but if you are, turn it off. Next up, formats. This is something that's important because your phone defaults to high efficiency. Now you want to change it to be most compatible for a few reasons, mainly being that when you shoot video, it's going to be a lot easier to edit and import to Premiere or another editing system before you edit it. So most compatible is very important here. It's also helpful if you're sending people footage because it's gonna be easier for them to use in their systems. So again, most compatible is what I recommend. Part two, inside the app. So when you open the camera, you're going to see different options along the bottom of the phone. If you scroll all the way to the left, you'll see time-lapse followed by slow-mo, video, photo, portrait, and pano. These settings may be different depending on what phone you're using. Now to understand how they all work, when you go onto time-lapse, you're going to see three different options, 0.5, one times, or two. You'll actually see this on most of the settings when you go through them all. And these options at the top are just a quick way in order to zoom in or out on your phone. So time-lapse is great if you want to record something and speed it up over time. The most important thing for time-lapse to know is that you want to leave your phone in a fixed position. You do not want to be moving your phone throughout the time-lapse if you can help it. This is because it's going to create a very long video in the end that it's going to shorten. So if you're shaking it, imagine something being sped up over time. It's going to look really weird if your phone is moving. So that's my biggest tip for time-lapse. You want to make sure that the phone is stable and in one place. Slow-mo. Now this is a really cool option. It literally records slow motion for your phone. Again, I think this is helpful if you're not moving with the phone because it's going to be changing the amount of time and how time is portrayed. So slow-mo is really fun if you want to slow down shots. Video. This is the basic video option. Photo. This is the basic photo option. Again, here's where I want to note the different numbers at the top. You have 0.5, one times and two. One is the most basic way you're going to view a photo. Two is a quick way to zoom in and 0.5 is a quick way to zoom out. Another way you could zoom in or out is using your fingers. So I prefer to use my two thumbs, hold them on the screen and push in and out. Now that is a way that you could zoom in or out when taking a photo or a video. Portrait mode. Portrait mode is a lot of fun because what it does is it creates beautiful images. It focuses on the person and it enables them to become the main part of the photo. And then what it does is it adds a natural depth behind them. That's how you get that blurred look. Now, the key thing about portrait mode that you have to know is at the bottom, you want that natural light to be highlighted yellow. If it's not highlighted yellow in that box, it is not doing portrait mode. So it's so beautiful as well because it naturally mimics what people see and how our eyes literally view the world. Pano. Pano is a lot of fun if you want to be taking 
visuals across a plane. Now panel works in vertical like this. It says move iPhone continuously when taking a panorama. So what I like to do is position it on my starting point and then go across and take a pano shot like that. So some key tips for this is hold the phone still, hold it smooth, and you want that arrow to follow the yellow line steady. Otherwise, you're not going to be getting a nice photo. Your photo is going to be all jumbled and mixed. It needs to be taken on one smooth plane. A cool thing about Pano is if you upload it to Facebook, Facebook is going to turn it into what looks like a 360 photo. It's not really 360 because it doesn't go all the way around, but it has that 360 feel like you're actually there. So you could click into it and make it feel like you're actually in the place if you use Pano. Now, depending on where you are, there are other things on the photo app that you need to know. These are photo app extras. And that includes flash. So on the top left, you could select flash to turn on or off. I always recommend trying to use natural light or added light of your own, light that you can control. I don't love using the phone's flash. It has gotten better with each model of the iPhone, but often the flash might mess up how the eyes look, add some extra shine. If you could use natural light, that is always the best. What I also do sometimes is if I'm shooting in the dark or it's late at night, I actually try to hold up another phone's light to create light on. So instead of using the flash on here, I'll even use a second camera's light or source from another light that I think creates more beautiful photos. So that's just a little tip. If you're with a friend and you could use their camera and use their light, that's something you might wanna try. In the top right, you should also see a live section. This is a way you could record photos in live mode. You just click the button to turn it on or off and live is really cool because it doesn't just capture your photo, it's gonna capture a few seconds before the photo and a few seconds after the photo. So that live button is a great way if you want your photos to kind of have some movement on each end of them. And the way you see that is you go into your photos, you hold down on a live photo and you will see the photo move. Yes, kind of like Harry Potter. Another thing you might wanna know are extras. What extra things can you get to make your photos and videos look a little bit better using the iPhone? Some things I recommend are audio. You might wanna look into an audio device that you could connect to your phone to get better sound. That said, these phones do have pretty incredible sound if you have the newest iPhone, but if you're in a busy place and you wanna record someone speaking, I do recommend getting a lavalier plug-in that could connect to the phone. Something else I really like is the B-Script. This is a really cool lightweight device that holds your phone like so and stabilizes it. It's a really easy way to get beautiful shots. It's not heavy and on top of it, you could even connect a light or a microphone. Something else I love is a Bluetooth remote. This is great if you wanna leave the phone in one place and get shots without having to literally touch the phone. This works if you're doing things like stop motion, where you're going to be taking multiple pictures and you don't wanna actually move the phone because keeping the phone stable is really important. That also goes for time-lapse or slow-mo. If your phone's in one place and you may wanna take a few different shots but have the shots stay exactly the same, that Bluetooth remote is a great option. You hold the remote, you walk away, and you could control the phone from across the room. Something else I also love is a tripod for your phone. You could get either a large tripod that could stand in a room and record someone, or you could get a mini tripod. I have one that I travel with that hooks onto things. Literally, you could bend the legs around a tree or a pole and get really cool shots that way. And I recommend getting that too with a Bluetooth remote. So there you have it. That's a really quick, basic 101 guide on how to shoot using your phone's camera app. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. I'm here for you. I appreciate you purchasing this course and I am available to answer any and all of your questions. So just hit me up. Thanks so much again for attending this Live News Workshop.